Hello students. In our last class, we had discussed about what is matter. As you all know, the basic building block of matter is atom. Just like the basic building block of this particular Lego structure is a simple Lego piece. So this structure cannot be created if we don't have this first piece of Lego. Similarly, matter cannot be created if we do not have an atom. So now proceeding further, today we will discuss the different characteristics of matter. Particles of matter are very small. Particles of matter have spaces between them. And these spaces between the particles of matter are known as interparticular or intermolecular spaces. The particles of matter are in constant random motion, which means that they keep on constantly moving. How do we come to know that particles of matter are in constant motion? There are two very, very common, very important phenomena which are known as Brownian motion and diffusion. Haphazard, haphazard means in any direction, zigzag. Zigzag, random motion of suspended particles on the surface of a liquid or in air is called Brownian motion. Brownian motion is very commonly seen on a very bright sunny day if you happen to sit in your room or if you're sitting uh, standing under a tree you see that there are certain particles of dust moving very fast that is but basically known as Brownian motion or if you enter a room a dark room and you switch on the torchlight you see that there are certain dust particles moving very fast those dust particles are showing Brownian motion. Now, the spreading out and mixing of a substance due to the motion of the particles is called diffusion. Now, this particular phenomena is very commonly seen when your mother is cooking food in the kitchen and you are sitting in your room and you get the smell of the food right in your room. It is because of this phenomena which is known as diffusion. Another example could be if you if your father or your mother has applied some perfume or some scent, you are able to get that fragrance. So the reason is because of diffusion. That means the particles are actually intermixing and that is how you are able to get the smell. So diffusion and brown in motion tell us that particles are in constant random motion. The fourth property or we can say the characteristic of matter is that the force of attraction, particles of matter attract each other. That is, the force of attraction between the particles or molecules of matter is called the interparticle force of attraction or intermolecular force of attraction. So, particles of matter attract each other. Now, based upon this, I will show you a few experiments so that you understand this. Before we do that, we let's uh, discuss one very common observation which you all must have seen. If you, uh, there are different, these are three different types of substances. They all are solids but they still vary in the force of attraction between them. Now, chalk piece can easily change into a powder if you apply pressure on it. Sugar, even if you apply pressure, the finest sugar particle is still going to be in the form of a crystal. On the other hand, if you want to crush or if you want to break steel, it is not going to be very easy. Now, why is there a difference in the three? It is only because of the difference in the magnitude. Magnitude means the quantity or force of attraction which varies from one substance or one type of matter to another. And on the basis of this, let us start a first experiment. I have taken three glasses which are equal, three equal glasses having equal measured quantity of water in them. They have approximately around 100 ml of water. Now the first characteristic of particles of matter says that particles of matter have spaces between them. Okay, so now how do we know that they have spaces between them? If I insert this spoon in one glass of water, they were all equal. Now if you try and just see it clearly, there's a very small difference though, a very small noticeable difference, but you will see that the level of water rises. So now why does the level of water rise? It clearly shows that there is some amount of space in water because which has been taken up by this spoon and that is why the level of water rises. Now in another bowl I add water. Now what do you see? 
water quickly starts taking the shape of this particular container. It has spread all around. And we do not see that water particles are somewhere less or somewhere more. They are equally spread around. So this shows that there is a force of attraction between the particles, one. And these particles of water are actually occupying some space of this particular bowl. Now, if I put a drop of ink in it, in order to show that particles of matter have spaces and are in motion, if I drop ink, now you can clearly see how the particles are of ink are trying to spread all around. So even if I don't shake it, it's going to mix up after some time. But here I am actually trying again to mix it. So if you see, ink particles have spread all around in water. So what does this show us? This shows us that water particles have spaces. This is the reason why the ink gets spread all around because particles of water have spaces. Secondly, the particles of matter are in motion. Since they are in motion, that is why they are able to move and spread all around. Third is particles of matter attract each other because there is a force of attraction between each other. That is why they are staying along with water. It's inside water and the ink particles are combined with water molecules. Now another experiment to show that particles of matter are in motion, to show that yes, they constantly move. I have over here pencil shavings. So if I put them over here, you can clearly see that they start moving. So they are showing a motion. This again, this experiment again shows that particles of matter have motion. So we have done a few set of few ex, uh, experiments over here. Let's do one more experiment in which I will be adding this pre-measured 5 ml of ink. This is 5 ml ink. This is a bottle cap that we get with medicines. So I'm adding this 5 ml of ink in this first glass. All Mind it, all these three glasses have 100 ml of water in each in them. So all of them measure the same. If I add 5 ml, I shake it well. And now I take out 5 ml from here. So from the first jar, this experiment basically shows us that particles of matter are very, very small. How do we come to know that they are very, very small? I take another 5 ml. In the first glass, I had added 5 ml. And I am taking 5 ml from this particular glass. And I will be... So, I will now add this to the second glass. So, you can see the color is there, but it has faded. This first glass has a very dark color. This has color, but it's much lighter than the first one. Now, I will take... 5 ml from this particular glass and add it to the third glass. So, this is 5 ml. I add it to the third glass. Now, what do you observe when you do this experiment? Each time we take out 5 ml of liquid from the first, we took 5 ml from this first glass, 5 ml of the liquid in which ink was added. The, in the second jar, in, this, in the second class, we added that 5 ml, the color of ink fades. That means the particles are actually getting combined or getting mixed with water. Why? Because the particles are actually very, very small. So then we take 5 ml and put it in this glass. If we have a series of other glasses, so the color of this particular liquid is going to get faded. So this clearly shows that particles of matter are very, very small. This is the reason why we are able to separate out it in different glasses. Now, the last experiment which I will be showing you here is to show that particles of matter attract each other. Now, suppose, now I had actually added water in this particular glass. Can you all see that? There's still a little bit of water which is attached to this, right? So that means there is a force of attraction between this water, water droplet and this glass. Because of this force of attraction, it is actually getting sticked 
with water sorry with this glass so this shows that there's a force of attraction between unlike particles also this is a solid this is a liquid but there's a force of attraction between the two of them because of which it is getting sticked over here